Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is another episode of 1804 History. So, before I start this episode, make sure y'all hook me up. Okay. So, here's a story about Miss Lena Baker. Lena Baker was from a small town in Georgia. And, hold up one second, please. Uh, my light gone, my light gone. To get it back, light gone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> My light disappeared. But yeah, she was from a small town in Georgia. <laughs> and um, she was a mother of three kids. And she was basically working in a cotton field. So this white man had came to her and asked her, would she work? For his father because he became ill so she insists of working for him and then little did she know that he was um alcoholic and everything so basically you know she was looking out for him making sure that he was taking his medicine and everything like that. So, Mr. Knight is his name. Mr. Knight ended up sexually assaulting her. Just numerous of times he will rape her. And it was nothing that she could do because of the fact that she was in Georgia. She was in a small town. And this is the Deep South. So it wasn't like she can go to the local police about it because the local police wouldn't do anything about it. And it got so bad to the point that he would show up to her house and just go get her at any time he wanted. So her mom went to the sheriff and insist that they would go and have him arrested for raping her daughter. So the local sheriff's department refused to go get Lena. And pretty much it lasted for a period of time. So one night he went to her house and took her while she was taking care of her kids. So after that, um, she refused his advances and everything like that. And then he went to go start putting hands on her. And he was going to rape her again. So she found the pistol. And then she shot him. And killed Mr. Knight. So she was arrested for murder. Capital murder at that. <sighs> so she went to trial. And she tried to convince the jury that it was self-defense. And he was raping me and I had got tired of it. So I shot him in self-defense. Because he was going to put his hands on me and rape me. So the jury wasn't going to hear all that. So they found her guilty in less than six hours. And she was sentenced to die by execution. So the day of her execution, she was given her last meal. And a local white man showed up to make sure that she wasn't by herself. 
to make sure that she wasn't alone because he was sent by her mother. So she was followed into the execution chamber. And she sat in a lecture chair and they asked her for her last words. And her last words was, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to be with my God. So she was executed March of 1945 by the state of Georgia. And it took 60 years for her to get pardoned by the state. You know, I really don't be wanting to give y'all the full details because I want y'all to get y'all and do your own research. But yeah, um, just like I tell a lot of people before, just because you're a man, just because you're a woman, and just because you're a kid, they're not going to have any leniency on you. And these are stories from the past, man. And it just makes me furious when I hear stuff like this coming from an innocent person. You know, what would you do? And this is like the real civil rights movement, man. This is not what be discussed in schools and be talked about in the books or how random white men would come and snatch your mothers up, snatch your sisters up your daughters up and they would go take them back to their house and rave them or just, you know, sexually assault them on your property. And it was nothing that anybody could do about it. So it just makes me mad how um, nowadays it just, everybody treat each other like a slave auction. You know, how much, is he worth? How much is she worth? Instead of sticking together, instead of loving each other, instead of respecting each other. Because, you know, I ain't racist one bit. I never was, never will be. But it comes a time where you got to stick to your own kind. You got to stick to your own people, man. And a lot of people isn't going to like what I'm about to say, but it's the truth. You know, I mainly like nowadays, you know, we discourage ourselves, you know, we hurt each other. We don't love each other. We so quick to go against the grain. We so quick to attack our own. Instead of sticking together, because all we have is each other, man. And it's for this woman who was 45 years old with three kids and she had to leave this earth without her own submission. Didn't even die on her terms. Didn't even die a peaceful death. So it's just unfortunate, man, to have 60 years go by and then you are pardoned by the same state that executed you, knowing damn well what really happened and knowing that somebody could have had stepped up and did something about it and nobody did anything about it. So this is, you know, another tale of when you defend yourself and you take matters into your own hands, you're still guilty. Even if you're being raped, beaten, drunk, poisoned, and nothing happens to the person that does it to you only to you and it's such a shame how they talk about Rosa Parks and they talk about all these other great women that did um, justice or was phenomenal but they leave out her in the history books so it's just gut-wrenching because this lady is old enough to be my mother. This lady was old enough to be your auntie, your grandmother. And she didn't deserve none of that. All because she refused 
to be a victim. It was either him or her. <laughs> and she chose her. You know what I'm saying? And it just comes a time where we have to just acknowledge just as a country and admit what we did was wrong and admit that we wasn't always so patriotic that we didn't practice what we preach in that doctor that declaration of independence and i just wish that people will just um take heed of the past and realize where we stand where we always stand because the history always repeat itself it still goes on today with Breonna Taylor, with Sandra Bland, with Nakia Boyd, countless and countless of people who died. Just the unfairness here. And looking at her tombstone on the internet when I was doing my research for this episode, The, her old tombstone clearly showed that they didn't give a fuck about her. It was so small. It was like a just a small, tiny square until it was updated a few years ago. But there's no telling um, how her kids um, made it through without their mom. I'm pretty sure that the whole family was crushed and ruined and destroyed. So her kids have have to be like in her 70s now. But it's just unfortunate, man, to be a young kid and your mom being executed by the state of Georgia or just by any state, period. We take so much for granted and it's time that we just show our appreciation and keep remembering these people, keep remembering these fallen heroes, man, because she was a hero. Because if it wasn't going to be her, it was going to be somebody else. But she was just singled out. A lot of people say she was set up Could have been, could be, but it's just sad, and I really hate that it happened to her, because she was such a good soul. Went to church, God-fearing woman, read her Bible, was well-loved by her family and friends and the people that knew her, but... I just want everybody to understand is that even when you're innocent, you will be guilty because the color of your skin. Just keep in mind. But that includes tonight's episode. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And everybody, have a good night. Peace.